Hey guys, it's Mr. Walsh here. Today we're going to be talking about how to use NoteFlight, and more specifically, how to set up NoteFlight to get us ready for things like partner duet projects or even compositions. So the first thing we need to do, as always, uh, is sign up. Uh, what's great is NoteFlight is a free program. Per usual, we're going to be signing up using Google. You got to agree to the consent, and you got to sign up using Google. Uh, you'll choose your account, and I've I've already got a NoteFlight account, but you might need to set up an account. You know, say who you are, that sort of thing. Uh, then you're going to get dumped to a screen like this. And now you're not going to have any of these. These are things that I've done with my other classes. Uh, we need to go ahead and create a new score. So up here in the top left, you'll see the Create button. Now, once we get in here, we're always going to start from a blank score sheet. And this is the free version, by the way. So uh, everything you see here is, is something that you can get at any time without paying any money. So we have a lot of things over here. Ignore all of this for now. We now need to go and make sure that we put in our instrument or instruments first. Uh, the standard is always going to be a piano. Uh, so you're going to go in here to this guitar where it says parts, and we're going to add a part. So let's say we're writing something for uh, flute. Okay. Let's add another part in there. Maybe we're adding trumpet in here as well. And let's say there's um, an alto saxophone as well. Now, you'll see it's going to label all of them. And we don't want this piano, so we have to go in and we have to take out the piano first. Okay, so now we've got all of our instruments here. But part of the trouble with this is we need to make sure that we're in the correct key. So our key uh, in middle school band, mostly for what we're going to be doing and probably what you're going to want to be doing too, is the key of B-flat concert. So we go up here to the key signatures button and we got to go and change to B-flat major. B flat major. So all these options we're going B flat major. Now we take a look at the key signatures here. Uh, if you are a trumpet and you're trying to play your note in B flat concert or B flat do, uh, there are no flats in the key signature. And if you're an alto saxophone, there's one sharp in the key signature. So we've got to go in and change that. It's so easy. All you do is you press this tuning fork button up here and then everyone's in their appropriate key. In the key of B-flat concert, flute has two flats, trumpet has zero flats or sharps, and alto saxophone has one sharp. Now, that's the biggest thing that people look over, is the key signature, and even pressing this tuning fork. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be all messed up, and it's not going to quite sound the way that you want it, so you've got to be really careful with that. Next thing I want to show you is the different areas uh, and different things that you can do. So in order to create a note, you just click in the area and then it's going to give you a note head. And let's see, we'll just say that we're going to put that note in there. Um, let's see, trumpet, you can put that note, well you can change it. All I'm doing here is I'm pressing the up or down arrows. Now the trickiest thing that I've found with note flight for beginners is how they change the rhythm. They put in the note first, and then whatever is highlighted, you then will go up to the duration tab. Uh, and with the duration tab, you're gonna choose what note value you want. Now, if you do not have any of these things up here, you don't have the duration tab, the pitch tab, whatever, you can always go to this waffle stack, and it will, it'll have some things checked for you, it will have some things not checked. See, for example, check out this duration thing up here, if I press, duration over here then it disappears now some students will look at that and they'll freak out you have to go here press whatever that is and so this could be with anything this could be I've got kids all the time asking me well how do I do a slur well I'll go to uh, let's see articulation and then that shows you a slur option now too and what's great about note flight with a, as with a lot of features of different programs is once you hover over things it'll tell you exactly what it's used for so duration, say I want uh, just four eighth notes and a half note. Now that this is selected, it's going to do that all the time. But now I could go in 
and I have to choose, I have to make a new note. And then I can change the duration. All right, say I'm doing this and I want an accidental in there. Okay, so that's gonna be under pitch. Again, you have to have a note selected. And you can press something like the sharp or anything there. Okay, let's see, maybe I go to alto saxophone here and what if we go, we're gonna add a note. Maybe I want this. Okay, and so now let's say I want to slur these notes. When you're slurring, you have to choose the first note that you want to slur. Press the slur button, and then it'll automatically slur the next note, but you can drag that and change that. Now, uh, from here, the next biggest issue that people have is adding or subtracting measures. So if you want to add a measure, you have to click in this spot in between the gray bar and um, the, just like to the top of the measure. So now you can do that, and now you have the options here. You have the subtract button, and you have the plus button. So if I'm down here, let's go plus. I have to do it again, plus. Or I say, oh, I don't want that one. Let's go minus. Maybe I only want a one measure composition, so let's, let's try that. And so here's your composition. You can have all these rests if you want. Uh, if you want to get into some advanced things, there are ways to change the tempo, there are ways to change the key signature, uh, but this is just, these are the basics for us right now. Last thing I want to show you is when you're all done, uh, when you're turning this into Google Classroom or wherever you might be turning it into, you need to export it as a PDF. That's the best way for your teacher or myself to be able to get whatever we need to get from you. So first thing, you gotta save. Always have to save, always have to save. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that NoteFlight saves automatically, so this is something that you have to be aware of and something that you have to be proactive with. Uh, like I said, last thing, we are now going to um, export this as a PDF. So the way that we do this is, okay. Right next to the save button, it's much smaller. It has an export button. It looks like a cloud with a down arrow. You're gonna press that. And then you're gonna export score to the full score PDF. And you can do individual parts. You can do full score and individual parts. Uh, make sure you have your ad blocker disabled. Okay, and then you can continue and it'll export the PDF. You click save and there it is. So that's a real basic overview of NoteFlight. I encourage you to check this out. I mean, there are so many things that you can do. Uh, you can add composers and lyricists. This is one of the best online free programs for notation. Uh, and the playback, I mean, it's not great, but you can, you can do a lot of really cool things with that. All right. Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. Have fun with this.